Hey, this is Ralph, and I want to look at uh, this database that we've been working on here, the Alaska Legacy Database. I started a couple videos ago, and in this video I'd like to focus a little bit on some of the, the field properties. Not all of them, but just a few of them that you might check out. Now, since you saw me working on this database last, I did establish relationships. So I've got three tables here, customers, rooms, cabins, and reservations. We've got a small lodge here. They've got some cabins, they've got some lodge rooms, and they've got a list of customers. And then, of course, we can in theory, keep track of whenever a customer reserves a particular room. Now, what I've done that you didn't see recorded was I've added some data in here. And I've got about uh, 30 customers, okay? And I've also put in some data on some rooms and, rooms and cabins. I did not put anything under reservations. I'm going to keep that blank for now. Uh, in the description for the video, I'm going to have a link over to an Excel file that contains the data that I put in. But I don't want you to feel too concerned or too obligated to rush over and get that. Early on in Access, you can practice just fine by typing in five or half a dozen records of fake data. So if you want, just go ahead and type out about five or six customers. Just make up names, make up addresses, make up city states. It really doesn't matter what you put in here. And you could do the same thing for rooms and cabins. Um, I just made up a bunch of stuff on here. Now since we did a lookup wizard, if you recall, a lookup wizard data type, then when I go to something like room view, I do get a drop down of choices. So that made it kind of easy to pick different things. And I just randomly put in some prices. We can obviously change our minds later. It doesn't really matter. But it will be nice to have some mock data in your database early on so that you can at least start to get some realistic results. Now later, as we get a little bit more complicated, I'm going to provide you a bunch of data. I want you to have thousands of records to search from because then you're going to have much more realistic kind of results. Your forms will be more realistic. Your reports will be more realistic. So as we get to those bigger heavy duty skills, then um, I will provide you more full fledged Excel data uh, files, or I'll just provide you a database file that has the data in it, but doesn't have maybe the queries in it yet or something like that. So for now, don't hesitate to just type in, do a little bit of boring data entry, type in some fake people, type in some fake rooms and cabins, reservations still has no data in it. Let me look at my uh, customers table real quick. I'm going to head on my home ribbon and look over at design view, design view of my customers table. And of course you'll recall we did these fields a little bit earlier in a different video. But I've got a lot of text fields in here. A lot of text fields. And let's see, I'm missing actually one that you saw me create and that was notes. See I did an import of data from Excel and that kind of got rid of a field here. So I'm just going to go and put in customer notes and I'll make that a memo field. There we go. So a bunch of text fields, and I'll just click on any text field, it doesn't really matter. And let's just take a, a quick glance down here. Um, so you can set field properties for fields, and depending on the field type, you're going to get different field properties. I just want to point out a few of these, and we'll look at some of them in more detail later on. Field size is one of the first ones I'd like you to know about because it is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and you should have a really clear idea of what it's going to do, even if you've never heard of it before. I'm going to set the field size. By default, text fields can hold 255 characters. That's not very necessary for a last name. So I'm going to change that to 20 characters. Now you could be tempted to say, well, why not just leave it at 255? And you could do that. And for small databases, and certainly the databases we'll be practicing with in this class, that's not such a bad thing. But that space does get allocated. So if you know that you're not going to need 255 characters allocated for all of your fields, you might as well as narrow it down. And this will really stand out too if we go to something like state. I'm going to change my field size for my state field to two characters. I only want the two letter abbreviation in there. Let's look at something else. I'm going to change format real quick. For format, there's different characters by the way you can put in here. Um, I'm going to change this to a greater than sign. What that's going to do, it's going to automatically uppercase whatever I type. I'll give you a quick example. I'm going to jump over to, uh, nope, we got to save the table. I'm going to jump over to Datasheet View. 
And for instance, I could just go to a state here, like VA for Virginia. I can type in FL, lowercase FL. And as soon as I tab away, I get an uppercase FL. I'll go back and put in a lowercase VA, and it automatically puts it in there as uppercase. So that was just a format symbol. I did a greater than sign. And you could probably figure out what format symbol I would put in if I wanted to force the field into lowercase like it was an email address or a web address. Now an input mask will kind of help you fill out a particular field. A phone number is a good one for that. So if I head over to phone number, I can look over at input mask and I can choose the ellipsis and that's going to open up a dialog box and I can choose an input mask for common text fields and sure enough there's one for phone number. I can go ahead and choose that one next and the basic format that's fine and I'll just click finish and it's going to put these sequence of characters in there for me. What that'll do, let me go back over to data sheet view, save my table if I go to enter in a new person, I'll just jump down here real quick. And let's see, how about um, Smith Tom, one, two, three, left lane, Tampa, Florida, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just hitting my tab key over, and I'm over at the phone number field. Notice that it's putting in the parentheses for me for the area code and basically the other little prompts for the other parts of the phone number. So the input mask just kind of helps walk me through the kind of data that I might be looking for. I'll leave those other fields blank, jump back over to design view. Caption provides a human friendly name for our particular field. You notice my fields are not very human friendly. Cust ID, cust last, cust first. Well, if I were to create a form or a report using this particular table, and we will, then these are the field names that are going to be put on the form and the report. And although I like cust city and cust st for my field names, I don't think they're very practical for a report or form that's meant to be seen by customers and employees and things like that. So what I would do for something like this field, cust st for cust state, I would head down to my caption and I would write in state. And for like zip, cust zip, I'd head over to caption and I'd type in zip code. For cust add, caption, address one or address line one or just address. So basically I'm putting in a much more readable human friendly name as the caption. Okay, and I just want to wrap up a couple more here real quick. Default value, do you want it to start with something automatically? Let's say I was entering in students at a school database and that school was in Oregon. I might set the default value of OR for their state since practically all students registering at the particular school in Oregon will have an Oregon address. I do want to do some stuff with validation rules and validation text, but I'd like to hit that in a separate video with examples. A validation rule will help put in some constraints about what can be entered into the field, and then validation text will be the error message that pops up if somebody breaks the validation rule. Okay, So I think I'll stop it here. I want you to experiment with field properties. Just go to the particular field in Design View. You can do some of this, by the way, up in, uh, in Datasheet View also. And just look at the various field properties for the field and see if you can't customize it to better fit your data.